morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my gosh. Um, so here we are live. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Jennifer. Thank you for letting us know that there was a spammer in the group. Um, that was uh, very unexpected. I don't have this group locked down right now. Um, it's open to the public. Anyone can join. But if you know, there's people that are coming in and spamming. It's um, a reason to um, make the group private. I'm not going to do that yet, but um, it is definitely something uh, to consider, especially after this. So thank you so much, Jennifer. I really appreciate it. Thank you for letting me know. Um, today, I want to really talk to you about what it looks like to be an artist. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and uh, we were talking about artists, you know, and one of the things that uh, came up is that you can sell your art um, now and, you know, you can scratch out a living, um, but the way that you're really going to be renowned is by your willingness to put yourself out there. That's how you're going to really leave a legacy. That's how you're really going to um, make a mark that is a path for others to follow. Um, a couple of stories. Um, one of them is uh, Van Gogh. You know, Van Gogh in his life sold one painting, just one. And the only reason that we know about Van Gogh today is because of his brother, Theo. Now, his brother, Theo, loved his brother, loved Vincent, just absolutely supported him in his pursuit of art. And after he was gone, he began to share his story. And it is the story of Van Gogh that we really uh, used to really emphasize what um, we understand about this particular artist. It is his story that is really powerful and compelling. And every one of you has this incredible story to share with the world. You do, you have this incredible story that differentiates you from everyone else because you are incredibly unique and sharing your story, crafting your story so that you are making a mark, not only in selling your work, but getting really good money for your creativity, for the amount of study that you have put into your craft, for the, the heart that you have for creating. It's really a powerful component to being an artist. And people are so curious about you all the time. And if you just open the door just a little bit to let people in, to let people know more about you, more about your story, more about who you are as an artist, the world is your oyster. And not only are your paintings selling, but you're getting more money for them, right? And I want to use a couple of examples um, of a contemporary artist, um, Burton Silverman, incredible, incredible artist, right? Um, and I use painters because um, that's what I am as a painter, though we have photographers and writers and musicians and sculptors in our community. Um, I use painters mostly because uh, they're the ones that I really identify with. So Burton Silverman is this incredible artist and his skills are just really at the, the top of the food chain, right? But how he got there was that you know during the 60s when uh, everything was all about um, expression and all about um, 
uh, abstracts and and uh, really expressing yourself. He and a group of other artists came together and they really began to emphasize the representational side of art. And he made for himself a name, right? And that name began to build on itself and uh, people began to follow him. And he is, man, uh, Burton is uh, an incredible, amazing artist and his work is just absolutely divine, but it was his willingness and is his willingness to be known that differentiates him, that stands him apart, that gets him the really big dollars for his work. Because there, um, uh, another story, there is um, one that I love to tell about an artist who was incredible, ahead of her time. She was in the Chicago Art Institute um, in the beginning of the 20th century. So, gosh, 100 years ago, right? She was in the Chicago Institute. But her family didn't value what she did. And when I met her granddaughter, uh, which was the mother of a friend of mine. And they had just remodeled their home and found out that I was an artist and really wanted to share this incredible, beautiful work with me. The place that she took me was to the shed. It was 105 degrees out. And there were these, oh my gosh, these portraits that she had painted were just phenomenal. And they never should have been in the shed. And it's because she went into obscurity, right? And it's so easy. There are so many amazing artists out there that are unwilling to put themselves out there. Oh no, it's uncomfortable. Oh no, I don't, I don't like it. What are my friends going to say? What are my peers going to say? Those aren't your audience, right? Other artists can look at you and look at what you're doing and there's envy in them. And suddenly they're going, oh my gosh, look at what so-and-so is doing. You know, um, do they really have the skill or the ability? Well, you have the skill and you have the ability because it's something that is in your heart and in your mind. It's your willingness your willingness to put yourself out there, to be vulnerable, to um, fight the fear, right? Or feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, for my own self, um, doing video is not my most comfortable thing, but my mission is so much bigger than my comfort zone. And it's, that's where growth happens is outside your comfort zone. That's where things really begin to get interesting. That's where your art begins to grow is when you are outside your comfort zone, you're stretching yourself, right? Well, the same thing is true of your art business. Your willingness to put yourself out there is what is going to make you Someone that is remembered. Um, I interviewed um, Cesar Santos uh, several years ago, and one of the stories that he shared, and this was back when Facebook was young, you know, it was just coming out, and he was saying that um, he had um, looked at what people were were posting, and he was a young artist. I mean, very very avant-garde, but it was very young. And he started seeing um, that there were people that he really wanted to be associated with posting. And he thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna join this group because you know, so-and-so uh, who I really admire their work um, is part of this group. And I'm gonna post on, on their, I'm gonna comment on their post. And he made sure that he did that, right? And he was really focused and determined and he grew his, oh my gosh, um, I don't know what Caesar's list or, or his follower size is right now, but it is 
um, on Instagram, I believe that he is at over a hundred thousand followers and on Facebook, he's got tens of thousands of followers. It was his willingness to be uncomfortable, to step outside his comfort zone. So you can scratch out a living by selling your work, but when you get really serious about it and you say, okay, I, you know, what I'm doing is so much bigger than just scratching out a living. And you are willing to put yourself out there to share some of the other things that you're interested in. You know, one of the things about artists is um, they're creative in so many different areas, right? It's more than just the craft that they practice. Um, they are able to, um, I know for myself, um, uh, you know, I, I am a painter, um, but I have done um, hot glass, I have done stained glass, um, I've done china painting, um, uh, you know, the things that I've done, um, flower arranging, um, sewing, uh, the creativity that we have is so much more than just uh, the focus that we have for our passion, right? So we have many abilities. There are um, some artists that I know that are these incredible, incredible chefs that they love to be in the kitchen. And the things that they're able to do in the kitchen are phenomenal. Or there are uh, artists that I know that love gardening. If you were to share one of these other little side passions of yours, there's some that I know that um, are animal lovers. They love their dog. Their dog is part of their brand, right? If you are looking and expressing yourself with other parts of your passion, some are plain air painters and you know they go to these incredible locations and these incredible locations are just phenomenal. Well, what if you were to take your, your smartphone and just pan around going, oh my gosh, this is where I'm at today, you know, um, and share that on social media. And this is the season for uh, taking incredible um, uh, snapshots of different vistas. And there are some artists who are going to say, um, yeah, but you know, somebody's going to steal my content. That is something that we do have to be concerned about, um, but don't let it stop you because there's only you. Only you can create what you create, right? So if you're taking a video, it's very hard for someone to say, oh, that's the spot, right? Um, if you're taking snapshots, yeah, of the, the general area, not necessarily where you're focusing in on, um, uh, that can be uh, utilized. I, don't want you to compromise yourself, but I do want to encourage you to share more about who you are, what it is that you're passionate about, what it is that drives you, right? Um, there are some artists who are really driven by subject, right? They um, dive deep into a particular subject. There are some that are really passionate about um, other uh, areas of pursuit. Share those. Share those with the world along with sharing your art. Because one of the things that I see is that there are many artists who are only posting when they have finished a painting. They are only sharing their work when they have um, something new to offer, something new to share. And there are other artists that I know that share their process, right? And by sharing their process, they get the interest going, okay, here's a blank canvas, you know, a million different possibilities, or um, here is a, a blank piece of paper, you know, the possibilities are infinite, or um, this is something that I'm really interested in in pursuing uh, as far as sculpting or 
um, music, you know, I'm getting together with some friends and we're going to be really working on um, um, our next song and sharing part of the process that you are engaged in can really help generate a tremendous amount of interest in what you're doing in the finished product. And people feel like they're involved in the process. And being involved in the process is something that is really super powerful. It really makes a difference um, when that process is finished and you have something to offer. They're just going, oh my gosh, I can't wait. You know, and just showing one little snapshot of the beginning uh, doesn't necessarily do it. And it doesn't mean that you have to um, share the whole thing all at once, right? Um, it doesn't mean even if it takes you um, uh, 10 hours, 15 hours to paint a painting and you're able to do it in two sittings, right? Um, you can take those snapshots you can prolong that unfolding of the finished product. Oh yeah, this is where I'm working today. This is what I'm focusing on today. And even though you took the next photo just a, a couple of hours later, you know, this is where I'm working today. It's coming along, you know, I'm beginning to see and feel and, and um, get really excited about what I'm doing. And then uh, even though the, Photos are taken in um, sequence or video because I love video. It is a way to connect you with people. It is a way for them to see really hands-on. It's very engaging for people. And so uh, using photos, using video to help create that interest in what you're doing is really powerful. You're taking them through the process. You're making them a part of the process, you know, and, and at the end, gosh, I'm trying to come up with a name for this particular painting. Um, these are the ones that, it, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about right now. I actually helped uh, name a friend of mine's dog because he put it out on social media that he was trying to come up with the, the perfect name for his dog. And, um, I looked at his dog and I said, oh, that's Buddy. I mean, oh my gosh, that's Buddy. And that was the name that he chose. And I really feel connected to Buddy because uh, it was part of the process, right? So you're making people feel a part of your process, a part of your story. Um, if you are into gardening, man, you can take them on a journey from beginning to end, from tilling the ground to um, reaping the rewards of if it's flowers that you're growing or um, uh, uh, vegetables, whatever it is, you know, you can take them from beginning, oh, look, they're just beginning to sprout, right? Or if you're um, really in the kitchen, um, that can be a very colorful um, expression, right? Uh, if you've got animals, um, they're always good for uh, some kind of fun. They're always doing something that is really entertaining. Whatever your passion is, share that with people, right? Because the truth of the matter is that you can scratch out a living with your art, but your art will become something so much more to people when you are willing to share yourself, when you're willing to put yourself out there because you will find your tribe, you will find the people that really resonate with you. You'll find the people that want to support you, that want to really buy your art, that want to be part of the process, that want to uphold you and you will build huge communities but it's your willingness to be out there. Are you willing to do that? I know it's not comfortable. I know it's scary. And I know that there are days like um, for myself, there are days I come on here, I have no makeup on. Um, I am just, I'm just here, right? It's more important to me to share something with you 
than it is to make sure that, um, you know, every hair is in place, right? Um, so I, I just show up sometimes. So what are you willing to do? What, what is bubbling up for you right now? I'd love to see you drop it into the chat because I, I know that there's people here. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Put it into the chat. What's bubbling up for, for you? What is making you go, oh my gosh, that's too scary? Or yeah, I know I need to do that. Um, or no, there's no way that I'm going to be doing anything like that. It's all about my art and not about me. Well, here's another story. Bouguereau, who was a 19th century painter, one of my favorites, one of my favorite paintings in the whole world is the Song of Angels by William Bouguereau. And uh, that painting happens to live at the, um, uh, lives in Glendale at, um, mm, uh, it, it's a cemetery actually. And at the top of the cemetery, they have a museum and that Bouguereau is, and um, it is a huge, huge painting. One of my favorites, but there was a time in the mid 20th century, around 1950, um, somewhere in there, that you could go to a uh, garage sale and pick up a Bouguereau for a song because nobody knew. Yeah, it doesn't go with my doesn't go with my sofa anymore. It doesn't go with uh, my decor. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> leaning more towards. Um, uh, abstracts or, or whatever it is, he fell out of favor and fell out of the um, the repertoire of art until a curator, excuse me, <coughs> until a curator, um, I believe that it was in the 70s, and, um, rediscovered him. He actually had a couple of Bougaros and he was going, oh my gosh, look at the skin tones of this particular piece of art. Look at this. This is absolutely amazing. And he virtually single-handedly resurrected the interest in Bougaros art. And, you know, we know about Bougaro today because of uh, this curator and his interest in Bougaros art because there was a time that you could pick them up for a song, right? So making sure that you are continually a part of the conversation. And today, the thing is, is that our world is moving so quickly. It's what have you done for me lately kind of mentality. Oh gosh, I haven't seen you. Got one client, um, you know, that was going through some things and was pretty absent from his business for a while. And he's going, well, why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? And the truth of the matter is, is that when you end up backing off of your art business, sales go down, right? Um, uh, opportunities become fewer for fewer and further between, right? So making sure that you are spending 15 minutes a day, that's one of the things that I advocate. I look to design everything that I do for an art business around a 15 minute timer, because I know that you don't have a product if you aren't creating. And if you're spending so much time doing your art business, then suddenly your creativity feels stifled, right? So I love the 15 minute timer. I love the five for five. What five things are you going to do this week in 15 minute increments? What five things are you going to get done? So the five for five is something that I really love. I know that it sounds like I, I had some feedback from an artist going, well, gosh, in 15 minutes, I can't get much done. You know, I'm just getting started in 15 minutes. And I know that there are a lot of artists that really feel that they've got to do a deep dive. 
And that's why the timer is so valuable and so important. Because when you have the timer set, it really helps keep you focused on the task, but doesn't allow you to go into overdrive on it, right? Because the truth is you need to be creating. You don't have anything to offer if you aren't creating. So making sure that your art business fits into that 15 minute timer. And there are days when you're first starting out, when you're really first starting out focusing on your art business, it takes a couple of 15 minute timers a day, but it's set within this task is going to take me 15 minutes. This task is going to take me 15 minutes. I'm done. I'm back to creating. So I make sure that everything that I design is designed to keep you working, keep you creating, because I know that's where your heart is. And the truth of the 15 minute timer is, is it builds on itself, right? I tell the story of my friend who designed this incredible garden and she only had 15 minutes a day. She was a busy, busy woman and she was moving these huge, huge boulders that were half as big again as she was. And she could only move them a few feet every day. She had, oh gosh, I think that there were eight boulders, seven or eight big boulders that she was using for the front of the design of her garden. It took her a month to get the boulders in place, the backfill and the garden planted. But she did it in 15 minutes a day because that's all the time that she had. And watching her, seeing what she was able to accomplish in 15 minutes a day, how it built on itself. Because the first week, I'm just going, girl, you're going to be doing this a long time, right? But by the end of that second week, I'm going, holy guacamole, you have really made some incredible progress here. You know, and seeing what she had done and what she was able to do, because it wasn't just about 15 minutes. It was 15 minutes of focused work. So what are you willing to do? Breaking it down into 15 minute increments. What can you do? It's Wednesday already, right? What can you do this week to share yourself on social media somehow? What can you do? What can you do to share more of yourself, more of your story to draw people to you? What are you willing to do? And what is it that you need to fight through to make it to that place that you're willing to do that? So I would love to hear from you. I would love to know what is important to you. What is your goal for your art? Do you just want to keep painting? You know, do you have a nine to five job that, you know, I'm just a hobbyist um, and I love painting and I do it whenever I can? Are you an artist who is driven to continue to create? And you know that there's something really powerful in this desire in your heart, this passion that you have. And sharing it with others is something really super important. How are you going to do that? And it's by being willing to be seen. So I'm going to let you go today. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to have you be on here with me. If you are willing to let us highlight your art, um, please drop into the chat that, um, yeah, uh, I'm raising my hand. Uh, I'll be on here with you. I'll chit chat with you about my art because I'd love for people to see your art, what you're creating, and I would love for them to learn more about you. So if you're willing, this is a great place to start because you're in a community of artists. You're in a community of like-minded people, and it's a good place to get your feet wet. And I'm safe. Uh, I'm, um, I'm not intimidating. Um, it's a conversation that we have about art and about what you're doing and what that looks like in your life. So um, it, it's really fun. Uh, oh, yes, Brenda, I would love that if you, yes, thank you. Yeah, I love that. Um, 
uh, I will reach out to you and we will set it up. And I'd love for you to, um, to, <laughs> to um, be on here next week with me. I'll, I'll reach out to you, Brenda, and uh, we will talk about you being on here next week because I'd love to emphasize highlight your work and I'd love for people to meet you. So, um, and I know what a great artist you are. So, um, and that's the thing, when you come into this group, I not only look to see, oh, you know, we've got three new members. I look to see what you're doing, what that looks like, but it doesn't do any good for me to call you out. I want for you to raise your hand right? It's that willingness to raise your hand like Brenda just did. Thank you so much, Brenda. And um, we will have you on next Wednesday. So next Wednesday at 10, we will have Brenda Pinnock in here and uh, you'll see some incredible, beautiful art. And she is really incredibly inspiring. I know a little bit of her story and um, she's got an incredible story to tell. So um yeah, it's, it's really um, powerful and inspiring for other artists as well. So I'm going to let you go for the day. Um, Brenda, I will be talking to you and um, go have yourself a fantastic day. Be willing today to put yourself out there. Share something about your story a little bit more than just putting up a finished piece of work. Share some of your process, draw people in, make them feel like they're a part of your process, what you're doing, make them feel like they are on a journey, right? Because we love stories, don't we? We love stories. We listen to them. We watch movies. We pay for them. Oh my gosh, we pay for stories. We pay for great stories, right? And having a story to share is something that is really powerful about you and your art because each one of us has a story to tell. Okay, you guys go have a fantastic day and um, I will see you tomorrow morning quickly with a, a video. And next week, we will have Brenda on the live with uh, uh, the Facebook Live. And I thank you so much for raising your hand, Brenda. I love it. Okay. Go have yourself an amazing day and create something beautiful.